Hello everyone and welcome back to another Stratagoy video. We are continuing our faction focus series and we're on to the night hunt. So uh, I have been allowed or tasked, <laughs> I don't know what uh, what word you would prefer with for night hunt fanboys, to um, lead us into this video here uh, because I guess I'm more of, more of a death player than you are, Ryan? Definitely. Yeah. Uh, but that being said, uh, neither of us actually have Night Haunt as our main army, but we we know enough of the army to uh, chat a little bit about, little bit about it. So uh, let's look at the uh, battle traits here. So Night Haunt famously had a huge amount of battle traits in their third edition battle tome. Uh, it was a lot to chew through as a non Night Haunt player, and I imagine it was even. You know, just just as much work or even more, maybe uh, as a night on player to really get to the bottom of it. Um, but there are some some uh, classics here on the battle trade page, uh, like for example the um, ethereal uh, ability. So ignore all modifiers modifiers to save rolls, positive and negative, for friendly night hunt units, excluding Nagash, obviously. So this has been the same as it was before. You might think like, oh wow, the ward save that they usually get is missing but now that's on every separate ward scroll so the six plus ward is also still there um they now have this reaction that you could do for a command point uh, when your opponent declared an attack ability so it's almost like all out attack i suppose uh, all out defense um you get a five plus ward, which is nice yeah so Technically, the ethereal rule used to also have their retreat and charge, but that's been moved on to other things, kind of. And then the ward roll, the one little buff that came with the 5 plus ward is that um, it now is just whenever someone uses an attack ability. Before, it was only in the shooting phase or combat phase, mm -hmm. which is a subtle difference. But imagine that you, someone gets to fight in the hero phase for some reason. Now you can also choose that ability. Yeah. So I think they did it, the same thing for the um, for a couple of other abilities because I've thought about that more than once now. <laughs> sure. Yeah. I mean, they're just making it more generic yeah, whenever you want to use it. And then one other ability that we're not going to talk about here that also got moved onto War Scrolls is auto wounding on sixes. Every War Scroll that they show us today has auto wounding on sixes, even for the companions or mounts. So um, don't worry about that. That's still there. It's just moved on to the War Scrolls. Yeah. Uh, then you get these four auras of dread, and it really reminds me of the Lumineth facet of war, where you get to choose a buff per turn. Uh, now, the difference with the facet of war from Lumineth is you, need, you get to choose one facet of war for the entirety of the turn, uh, whereas with an aura of dread, you just get to use all of them uh, once per turn, but you need to do it on different units. So that is a that is just something to keep in mind when we're looking at the effects here. Um, yeah, yeah. You want to you want to add something about that, Ryan? Uh, maybe because there's th they they arrange them funny on the page. There's three aura dreads and there's one that applies to it as a kind of a general thing. So maybe do the one in the upper right hand corner first. The uh, wave of terror. Yeah. So the wave of terror, uh, which is one of the fav my favorite ones. Uh, really crazy. Uh, friendly Night Hunt units that are in combat can use charge abilities this phase. However, if a unit that is in combat uses a charge ability and the, tr the ro charge roll is three or less, that unit, unit does not count as having charged that turn. So you should at least be able to get out of combat range with your previous uh, unit is what I take away from this. Yeah, the weird thing about... Th it, it changes the whole paradigm, right? Um, so... First, it says once per army, once per turn army, which makes you think only one unit gets to do it. But then the wording says friendly night hunt units that are in combat can do it. So I'm assuming they're basically just saying it's a technicality to say because everything's an ability now, you um, you don't get to do this multiple times with your sure. Um, but that was kind of implicit. But I think some people are going to read that wrong and think only one unit gets to do this. But essentially what I'm reading it is that say that you're in combat with someone, you roll another charge and you can either charge, you functionally charge your same unit, yeah. right? Like you roll four and then you you count as charge, but you can just stay, in, put, stay put. Or say you roll high enough, you can change units that you're in combat with. So it's, it's even though the retreat and charge rule is mostly gone, we'll see in a formation that it's back. But the retreat, in, it's basically without retreating. The big difference is when you could retreat and charge, you also had the choice to just go take an objective and stay there. Mm -hmm. But now but now you have to charge something. Basically, you have to be in combat with something. 
um, if you were currently in char in combat with something and then you try to use this ability. Is there any other reading of this rule that you see that I'm missing? No, for some reason, but I only read it quickly before we started making all these fac faction focuses. I really thought this was also an aura of dread. So uh, you really silly corrected me there, which I enjoy. This is even better than I thought it was before. It's a weird rule. It's a, it's breaking the way we see the way that being in combat and being charging. And I really like it though. It's so or, flavorful. It, it's definitely interesting. Uh, I think Night Hunt players are going to feel like they got nerfed with what we're about to talk yeah. about because it only happens once per turn per effect. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it's 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 shifting things. And my general point before we get too further is that I really think the game has been so rock, paper, scissors lately. Yeah. And the way Night Hunt used to work is every single unit that charged got some amount of a buff that could stack. And they all had retreat and charge. And I think some armies found that to be no problem at all. But some armies just got totally wiped out. Like you could give something minus three to its save and strike last. And mm -hmm. you were just, just destroying a unit that otherwise should have been able to stick around. And I think what this is doing is making it so that, and what all the indexes are doing, is making it so that armies are better situated against all other armies from the get-go yeah and that's better i'm really happy to see that so i feel for those night haunt players that are like hey i was low in the meta anyway why are they doing this to us but i actually think their war scrolls got buffed in a big way which we'll come back to in a minute so and we have yet as I've, i'm going to keep saying about all these faction focuses we have yet to see what the rest of the rules are but yeah and let i mean especially since it's so alike the nerves that Lumineth received it's just really um as you say you have you have turns where you're gonna be very very strong because everything works out and it's just as you want it but your opponent also is gonna have some breathing room and so on, on on some turns and that really lowers that rock paper scissors feeling that you're talking about exactly yeah all right, let's talk about the three different abilities. Let's do them in order of Shriek, Stun, Petrify, because that's the order they used to be in. Yeah, sure. Okay, so the Shriek one, uh, every every single one of these abilities is only once per turn and happens in your charge phase, just as it was before. Well, it wasn't once per turn, but it happened in the charge phases. Um, pick a friendly knight on you that has not used an Aura of Dread ability this turn. So as I mentioned, only one of these abilities per uh, unit, and that charged... Uh, this turn to use this ability. Then pick an enemy unit within one inches of it to be the target. The number of models in the friendly night hunt unit must be greater than the number of number of models in the target units. And the effect of Shriek is subtract one from hit rolls for the tar uh, for the target's attacks for the rest of the turn, which is potent, but not if you if you're used um, of getting this every time. Sure, because this was the easy one to get off. It yeah. was like your your charge of like a four or higher. Yeah. Um, and um, you could always choose in the old version of the rules to choose to for a lesser thing, even if you scored a higher one, which is what the other two functionally were. Mm -hmm. The interesting thing that uh, didn't occur to me is I used to, when I first read this, I thought you could stack, like the other ones are focused on being a cavalry or war machine or then being a hero. And I was like, well, maybe you already got the hero one off, the lower one, Shriek. But it implicitly says you have to outnumber your unit, um, which means a hero implicitly never outnumbers anything else. So uh, your unit has to be at least two or more to be able to get this one, but it's the most flexible of all the rules, which means you could be a cavalry unit and then trigger this. Um, if you, you could do the cavalry one with the cavalry unit and then also trigger this one as long as you count as more models as, a, as two different separate cavalry units that do it, as a, not, not stacked on the same unit. So subtracting one from hit rolls is now you can't stack that like to minus three from hit. But as you mentioned before, this isn't hand, being handed out quite as often as it used to. And um, we have reason to think that minus one to hit is pretty brutal, especially considering some units are hitting on fours or fives now. So, yeah. Yeah. But you have to pick and choose your targets because you only get to do it once. Yeah. So um, stun. Yeah, so stun is only for war machines and cavalry units now. That that didn't, that wasn't the case before, was it? No, it was if you rolled like a middle level. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so that's pretty big. Um, subtract one from save rolls for the target um, for the for the rest of the turn, which is strong, but it's kind of a bummer that it's only on war machines and cavalry units now. 
I assume that Black Coach is the only war machine they have, and then Cavalry will be like any heroes that are on Cav and or um, obviously Hex Race or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, And then, uh, yeah, minus one from save, but that's super broken if they can stack it, right? And so it was okay in a save stacking meta, but we don't have a save stacking meta anymore. And so if they could keep the old rule, getting minus three to save because they did MSU build, you know, that's the other thing about this is uh, Night Haunt players have felt for a while that they need to bring MSU as small units as possible so they got as many of these buffs off. But now they're liberated from that a little bit as a silver lining that since only three, this can only go off three times, one of each ability, uh, now they can bring big blocks of things and not have to worry about it. And we have three-inch range on everything so everything can fight. Yep. So I think in, in a weird way it kind of balances out. But But yeah, it's a little bit of a bummer. And then the last one, of course, is just the hero version, same exact wording, except it's strike last, right? So, yeah, I mean, the Petrify is pretty good in the sense that it, um, it it's it's not that difficult to pop off now, to get off now. And I, what I really like about the Shriek Stun Petrify combination here is that while you cannot proc it all on the same unit anymore, it kind of also encourages you to bring a mixed style of army which is always nicer to look at than an army filled with the same un- type of units so i really like that you you get you need to bring heroes to use a petrify you need to bring cavalry or a war machine to use a stun so you you you, you you're encouraged to bring all these types of different units yeah night always wanted heroes anyway so the fact that you don't have to roll a 10 up or whatever it exactly. was charge means you're pretty much always turning one unit and strike last as long as you're okay with sending a hero in yeah, and strike loss yeah. is pretty strong. Yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, so let's look at the let's look at the uh, formation. This is this uh, this is my least favorite formation I've seen yeah. of all the formation we've seen thus far. Do you want to take a guess why? Uh, because it it re, it uh, re enables the thing that you really disliked. Well, no, it, well maybe, but it's more that it's the obvious choice. What are the other three going to look like? They talked about them here in the text below saying that they'll they'll buff this or that or whatever. But like this is making the army play the way it used to Mm -hmm. and is so strong being able to it's actually better than what it used to be because now they can run and charge. So you all of your units can run and charge or retreat and charge in the same turn. And when they retreat, they don't receive mortal damage, which is like, why wouldn't you choose this one? I can't imagine what the other three are going to be. And I thought that the whole idea was that they were trying to make it so that all of the options were interesting. Yeah, they might still succeed at, uh, at, that, uh, at doing that. Uh, if they do, then they're they're way stronger than the other battle formations that we've seen with the others. So yeah. I'll put it that way. Yeah. But, I mean, this is a really strong ability. Mm-hmm. Every army wants this ability, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. So anything else to say about that? No, it's really good. <laughs> So their lore spell is Shade Mist, um, which I had to look up because it wasn't something I saw very often. It's another unlimited spell. It seems like that's what they're showing us in these faction focuses are the unlimited spells because every wizard can cast them. So it's like a battle trait. Yeah, and it's Um, probably also because it's a new thing, right? Unlimited spell is a new thing. Sure. And you're only getting three spells. So people are kind of recoiling from the fact that all your spell lures are being brought down but now you can this is one you can do as much as you want yeah it's just a bubble of subtract one from wound, wound rolls so and that's including shooting attacks so pretty good pretty good pretty yeah, good and only on a six yeah yeah so can't complain i think these are going to come down the unlimited spells are going to be a little have see if you will for armies that like to bring lots of heroes that can cast mm-hmm. and the, against the armies that don't Mm-hmm. So if you're an army that can only afford to bring one, maybe two casters per game, you're going to be like, I had other things I wanted to cast. But if you're an army that's comfortable bringing five heroes, all of which are wizards, all of a sudden your unlimited spells are like a new ability for your whole army. Yeah. So it's going to it's gonna really depend, I think, sorry, for, for those different units. Yeah. Some, some, somehow I really hope that not every army has an unlimited spell, even though I do understand your point about going down from six lore spells to uh, three uh, lore spell uh, spell lore, um, yeah. but I, I just I just really feel like unlimited spells are so strong. I I only want them for armies that all are actually strong at casting as well. Yeah, I, I get what you're saying, but I, I I think at least for the indexes, that's what we're gonna see. Yeah. Okay, on to the units. 
So Lady Alinder, um, a bit nerfed. Her shooting attack is no longer, it, it, crazily, at the bottom of the article, she could, with her horrifying visage, could take down a, um, to take down a monster. No, she can't. Um, <laughs> she's doing D6 mortal wounds on her best day, mm-hmm. uh, or D6 wounds. Um, uh, no, that's not what she's doing. On average, she's doing, I wrote this down, um, four, uh, let's see if, hold on. She's doing three and a third mortal wounds functionally on her best day. That's what it used to be. Now it's down to two, uh, two and a half at minus three rend. Mm-hmm. So no, she's not bringing even a foot hero down on average with that, uh, which is kind of a bummer. Um, and, uh, but the, some other things did get kind of buffed, I guess. Like, so she's subtracting three from control scores for all enemy units within 12 inches of her. That's pretty strong if if you're bringing the kind of weight of models that you're used to bringing for Nighthawk. Um, and then her resurrection ability, the once per battle on the left hand side, got nerfed because it used to be a D6, and now it's and it was only for summonable units, which we don't know what the kind of um, the the pluses and minuses are on units that used to be summonable versus units that this will now target. But it used to be D6, which D3 plus 3, as anyone that knows, is on average 5. So it's like you rolled a 5 plus on average on D6. Yeah, so not so nerfed, not but buffed. Bad. Yeah, so it's buffed. This yeah. one's better. Yeah. And it might hit more units now because it's not just units with a summonable keyboard. Yeah. That, that, that said, I don't know what all the units were that had summonable or didn't before. And then her spell um, is uh, doing even more than it used to. Uh, it used to give a minus one to hit for a specific unit and plus one to hit for all units that targeted that unit, that enemy unit. But now it's just making an enemy unit um, not be able to benefit from plus one to hit, wound, or save until the rest of the turn. This is one of the few spells that we've seen that only lasts for the turn and not until you're following start a turn. Luckily. So <laughs> we'll have to cast it again, but it's really strong. So I think in that sense she got buffed um yeah the spell in and of itself isn't that isn't is, is good but isn't that impressive but if you keep in mind that you also will inflict will be inflicting minus one to hit and minus one to wound on your opponents as well there's there's no way for them to offset that those minuses yeah so maybe that's making up for the fact that you can't stack it anymore yeah. um i think she's fine i don't think she got hit real hard um but i don't know if she's you know it's kind of uh, take it or leave it. It depends on how the rest of the army plays out. And so much depends on her points cost as well. As always, that's a that's an implied. Yeah, but some sometimes war scrolls are like so obviously worth worthwhile that you probably imagine them being okay with within a pretty big range of uh, possible uh, point costs. But with Lady Olinder, maybe I'm just not as hyped about her as you are. But it, I don't know. If if she costs four or more, four hundred no. or more, I, I'm not hyped about her. I'm just saying she could have gotten hit harder. Yeah. Um. And and the shooting attack is the main thing. It was an ability before. That's the main thing that got hit real hard. Yeah. Okay. Um. So Reichnor, um, is he got buffed a lot actually, um, because his output he's getting plus one damage on charge. He's got the auto wound like the whole army does. But if he's uh, against a hero or a wizard, he's doing insane amount of damage. It got it used to be around six wounds before save, and now it's up to with a against a wizard, he's doing ten, almost eleven wounds before the save against a uh, against a wizard with that profile. He's doing quite a lot. He's going wizard priest hunting, and then uh, in addition, his candles got changed. His candles used to do a mortal wound to an enemy unit, like it still does, or, and then he'd get plus one to casting, or now he gets plus one to casting, and if he does it to himself, instead of getting plus three to cast, he's going up a level as a caster, so he can cast two spells. Yeah. And I know you're saying, saying, I'd rather cast one spell with plus three than two spells with plus one, <laughs> but I don't think we're handing out plus, like, plus twos, plus threes as often as we used to be. Um... And for a guy that was on just like a cavalry kind of mount, I feel like getting to cast another spell at plus one might actually be more functionally useful than the other way around. 
Um, but who knows? Uh, it depends on what else is going on. Keep in mind, Krondis used to be plus three, and he's down to plus two. Mm-hmm. So um, it, it depends on what the rest of the meta is doing and what the rest of the, the good casters are able yeah. to do. Nagash doesn't have plus two to unbind and dispel anymore. Mm-hmm. He's only plus two to cast. Yep. So, you know, maybe this uh, – I, I, I might actually choose to take an extra cast. Um, yes, it's cool. It's just it's also ni- just nice that it's something different. For sure, they changed it, and it, considering his War Scroll spell is exactly the same. So yeah, but um, also different from the usual thing that you see, like plus two to cast is is something that you would expect on wizards as buffs, but this unit going up a power level is pretty cool, and still keeping the plus one to cast. So yeah, yeah, and taking one damage, you know, he might ward it off. Um, mm-hmm. you know, so who knows? And maybe there's other ways to heal him. Yeah. Um, so I, I think it's decent. He lost two inches of movement, I think, but otherwise he's, he's pretty good. Like he, for a hero that can do some melee damage and also has some casting bonuses, I think he's pretty good. Yeah. And his war spell is also pretty decent. Yeah. D3. And then if you slay a model, you do another D3. So yeah. Okay. Cool. The now Blade this arrows. is... This is the craziest thing they've done thus far. Um, they took a unit that used to be a hero and turned it into a regular unit of two models. Um, and you can reinforce it to four. They lost two wounds on the wounds characteristic, the health characteristic, but that's because they're just cavalry now yeah. that acts as like a buff cavalry, which means you can take them in conjunction with a hero and put them in a thing and they don't have to eat a whole battle regiment or whatever they're called now. They don't have to eat that whole thing up. Yeah. So... Um, and their buffs are great. First off, don't sleep on. They can teleport every single movement phase. Every single movement phase. Oh, wow, outside I didn't see that. They are tree revenants now. They used to be able to do it, um, but it was only in their own hero phase in, like, instead of moving or something like that. Now it's every single he- uh, movement phase they're, they're teleporting. Um, amazing. That's and good. if they... If they get a charge off, they're making all Night Haunt units with their holy than 12 inches plus three to control score for each one of the units. So obviously that that benefits MSU, but um, th- that's kind of running counter to the teleport. But say that one unit you teleport to just go steal an objective, and another, or sorry, one turn you do that, and on another turn you're trying to get that charge off and make your whole army around you getting plus three. Say you've got him, that's going to affect him as well plus any like two other units that's plus nine on an objective Mm -hmm. it's not not bad um and considering that unit of two still counts the same as what a unit of one as a but they have one extra health so i actually think this unit's fantastic the real question is are they going to come in a new are they going to repackage the box because i assume it was sold with like soul wars box it came in the box or something like that as like a single hero so how many people have two of these now? No, I think Hopefully. it's always been in, in, in twos. Oh, really? Yeah. But it was always heroes. It, they were always separate heroes. So I guess you got two for a box? I think so, yeah. In any case, really cool that they switched something from being a hero because this goes back into them trying to make the units feel distinct. Nighthawn had too many heroes. Yeah. And I hope they do this with, with um, Fire Slayers as well. Yeah. Give us different functions for our units and it has great functions it's basically tree revenants now mm-hmm. um with it, it gives other bonuses i'm all about it i think this is a huge buff and any army would be happy to have a teleport every single turn unit yeah i was just thinking like if these guys are cheap enough and um depending on the rules for allies obviously i could could definitely see myself bringing this in a soul blight army hundred well yeah Exactly, depending on allies, but 100% taking a unit that can teleport every turn, that's basically what Manfred used to do yeah. and what Legion of Night does, right? Yeah, so strong. Amazing. So, yeah, I mean, I, I brought um, the Tree Riffs in my Lumineth lists be- when they were uh, still cheap. Sure. There's literally a guy I'm playing at a tournament tomorrow bringing his uh, Zytrek list with a unit of Tree Riffs. There you go. There we go. Yeah. All right. So the Miramorn Banshees, These basically, are weird, are, right? they've always been weird. <laughs> yeah. The main thing that changed about these is just that um, it seems that they can keep doing their spell ability unlimitedly as if they, I guess it gives them wizard one every time a spell goes off to a friendly night hunt unit, including themselves, holy than 12 of them. 
Now, they lost the ability to, to be able to unbind or dispel this to endless spells. Um, if the endless spell is cast around them, then yes. Mm-hmm. Um, but only if it was picked as the target, which I don't think that works. No, that, I, don't I don't think, that's think so. Work. Yeah. So it's, it's going to only be for spells, regular spells, not endless spells. But unless an endless spell counts as targeting, its ability counts as targeting that unit. I don't know. I'm assuming no, but maybe it's well. But in any case... If they do it, it does D3 mortal damage to the caster, which it didn't use to do. Um, so I still think this unit is good. And they also got one extra health, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, they used to be one health, yes. And so they've doubled up on their health characteristic. Um, so this unit was always a good unit to take. And it used to be dependent for the plus one to the unbinding role was dependent on whether they had three or more models in them. And they came in the unit of two. So if you didn't reinforce them, you weren't getting it at all. And then, of course, if you knocked them down to only two models, they weren't getting it. But now they're getting it all the time. So I feel like they really play this role of anti-magic stuff. And considering that Reichnor also wants to go hunt magics, ma- wizards and priests, this might be a role that, that Night Haunt's trying to shift into that's, that's kind of like, we'll do our own magic on our own terms, but your magic, we're going to say no to. Yeah. Um, that's interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think this war scroll is probably more going to get used, or at least you're going to get more value out of this scroll than the the previous version. Yeah, I mean, the other version was also taken by almost list, at least one unit of four of them, or two of them, just so you'd have that ability. But now it's even more utilitous. Yeah. Okay. So the only other thing we got is the word of the head of Knight of Shrouds. Um, uh, Obviously, we can't read too much into this. Um, as far as I'm aware, his, he got nerfed down on his attack profile a good bit. Yeah. Um, and then his hero phase ability, um, is giving a ward, which you might not need to do, but what's also interesting is maybe if he does have that two sources of giving a five plus ward, uh, instead of the command, just the command ability, but I have a feeling the discorporate because that's, isn't that the name of the command ability? Mm. That's I, th- I thought that was the name. Let me scroll back up. Um, yeah, it's called Discorporate. So most likely that's just a spearhead version of the rule yeah. that he's the only source of giving that. And it's like a free C- CP. And I'm imagining that the uh, full AOS version of this won't have that ability and yeah, it'll be some. That makes cool. sense. Yeah. Nice, nice, uh, nicely noticed there. Thank you. So, um, <laughs> So we don't know if he's going to still have his other abilities, but uh, it's it's anyone's guess. It's yeah. a tin hat. I mean, uh, almost, it's almost right like you you've done this before. <laughs> almost like I've done this for a while. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It sounds but, like uh, you spent a lot of time analyzing these things, but I know that's not the case, right? You don't. You totally oh. don't have a thirty-seven page document about AOS four. Yeah, I mean, I try to be. You know what's funny <laughs> is is every time someone says something wrong in a video someone at home is sitting there saying oh this person doesn't know what they're talking about but it's really hard to keep on top of all this stuff even if you take all those notes so guys out there if we've said some stuff we don't know what we're talking about uh it's in all in the best intentions and uh hopefully we're more accurate our hit rate is pretty good let's put it that way hopefully we're 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 more accurate than not so I, i think we can probably wrap this one up we're trying to squeeze in four videos in one recording session here but guys i hope you're enjoying this stuff um we're really looking forward to fourth edition and what all the battle tomes are going to bring. Jonas, I really loved that you guys went so in depth on the Lumineth and you, the listeners out there better believe we're going to hit a lot of these battle tomes or indexes even harder when they come out. But uh, we're psyched about these faction focuses and to have AOS news literally every day is a blessing in a weird way. So uh, I don't know how you feel about it, Jonas, but um, maybe it's overwhelming. You see it on no, the other side. No, it's so fun. I love it. I'm looking forward to it every time. Yeah, so it's we're. At, I think we got a great year ahead of us, and, and Spearhead's going to be fun too. Even though we're not focusing too much on it, I'm going to be playing lots of Spearhead. I think as well. So, yeah. um, thank you guys for paying attention to all this. And if we cover your army, especially, and you think we got some stuff wrong, or you have some insider knowledge of how all these little details should be working um, intricately with one another, let us know in the comments below and hit us up in the Discord. And if you need us to open a new channel for your army that's not currently in Discord, let us know. We'll happily open a new channel. So yeah, I also want to add to that. If you're uh, 
If you're some sort of big shot tournament player that wants to add their insights to our videos in the future, you're always welcome to. We, uh, we really love including guests. Um, and if you've got some sort of track record that we can you know, base your uh, reputation on, <laughs> uh, that would be great. We, uh, we love extra insights. 100%. Um, and, you know, uh, it, those kind of videos, if we're covering the index, we have got, let's say, Jonas and myself, and then one of you guys that, that knows has extra insight like Siegfried does. Or um, if I need to sit one out to let two extra experts come on, or uh, maybe the other way around for Jonas. So. Yeah, definitely. Although that's, if it adds value, then it adds value. Yeah. Um, but the main thing is, let's keep it positive, you know? And like, try to see the the benefits of what makes this game fun to play. That's what I'm really looking for, and uh, looking for in someone that comes on the channel. Siegfried's always um, adding a positive spin on yeah. things, even if he's bummed about the way something <laughs> turned out for Sky Mountains or something. You know. Uh -huh. So anyway, we love you guys. Thank you so much. And until the next time, Ryan and Jonas out. <laughs>